What was it like when you first met Arnold? Because I don't think we ever spoke about that. Um, it was kind of a little overwhelming. You yeah. Know? Like I'd met him years ago. Um, like I'd lined up like a fan back then in Columbus, Ohio in the early 90s. It was like you pay an extra 50 bucks and get a photo with Arnold. I'm like, that's me. Done. <laughs> He's my idol. That'd be cool. <laughs> and it was kind of underwhelming because it lasts like one second. And you get pushed into this room. He says, how are you doing? <laughs> Someone takes a photo and get... Shit, that wasn't a bad door. impression, man. <laughs> and, um, and they give you this, this back then, this polar... Because no digital photo, this Polaroid picture and this cardboard frame. And you shake it like shit. And you say, shit, I hope it turns out. And there it is. I've got it up on the wall. Yeah, there, I was going to ask. On the wall there it? somewhere. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, so it was the first time we met. But memorable for me, not so memorable for yeah, Arnold, for sure. who had probably 500 pictures that day. Anyway, <laughs> so when I went over and met with these people and everything else, they said, well, you've got to come to Columbus, Ohio. It was 2014. So it was the year before I started mine. And, uh, you know, I was going to come into this, this, this luncheon and meet everyone. And uh, that'll be a chance to kind of... Like we've said yes, but he's got to sign off oh, on, right. on you. Yeah. So yeah. You, you know, well, no pressure. So uh, yeah, I went and had a really nice new suit made. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go in there and, and and be the best version of me I can be, and just tell him how hard I'm going to work. So mm. it was a funny thing, quite hilarious actually, because what happened? So there was there was a, a table there from Spain, a table there from South Africa, who were sort of in the bidding process at the time, but came a year or two later. Um, the Brazil people were there and they had like a whole entourage of people there was actually a team there from China didn't come off but they were there to present their case and uh, so I go into this room and of course the Columbus Ohio so there's six tables set up one for each continent with yeah. you know ten chairs and placemats and knives and forks and candles and all the shit and a sign on the table you know China, Brazil blah 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 and here's this one that says Australia is it just you? and I rocked up on my own oh my god <laughs> like, that's ah! crazy so shit so Holy I sat on this big table <laughs> oh, <fuck>. freaking out <laughs> I'm freaking out I just feel like shit yeah need an entourage oh, I, need, need, I should have hired some people yeah anyway yeah. anyway it was a funny thing I think it was funny anyway then um, uh, Jim Lorimer who's the, the original partner and his son Bob is the you know, best friend in the world now but um, uh, he, he was the founder of this and it's a great story because he started the Arnold Classic when he was after he turned 60 Oh, he's wow. 93 now yeah, he's just awesome. done his 32nd edition and it's like wow you yeah. know most people are slowing down he's like let's start something new let's do, build the biggest sports festival in the world anyway so he's get up and ma- started making a speech he said I'm going to get each of the partners from each of the countries to, to the continents to nominate someone to get up and to make a speech and to tell the governor why they're the right person to do this I'm like no one told me about oh, that I'm wow. prepared I'm like well then Arnold walks into the room and you know the first time I guess I've kind of got used to it now, but the first time you see Arnold walk into a room, he's one of those people that just I'm just lights up a room, you know? It's like, it's Arnold. And he walked in and he looked over at me and he goes, what are you doing there all by yourself? And I said, oh, yeah. He said, <laughs> like, come and sit with us. I'm like, oh, cool. So I went and sat at his table. And um, so everyone got up and made their speech. I'll, I'll go on all day, so I won't tell you all about the speech. But I made my speech, come down, and he grabbed me, he gave me a big hug. He goes, it was fantastic. I'm going to look forward to working with you. Really? I think we're going to get on just fine. So I'm like, wow. Oh, that went pretty cool, but yeah. I was sweating. Like, I had to make a speech in front of Arnold. I've been doing public speaking now for 20 years. I've had TV shows. I've done you know, more public speaking than most people do in 10 lifetimes. Yeah. But to speak in front of him, your idol, and to sell yourself with no notes and no preparation. When I'm, I'm with these other five continents who've got a spokesperson and a written speech, oh, and hell, you know, I'm like, ah, shit. Yeah. I better come up with something cool. So, so without going, you don't have to go too deeply into it, but what, what yeah. did you say? Like, what was some of the stuff? What did well, like, you want him over, I guess? Um, well, I, I just, just realized. I said, listen, yeah. um, you know, I, I said, I, I don't know exactly how we're going to do this, but I know that you know, we're going to have the first Arnold Classic in a year from now because ours, that first year was one week after Columbus. This is right. March 2014. We're going to do March 2015. So I said, look, um, I'll just talk a little bit about, you know, the city of Melbourne and how Bob had been down there and loved it. We had great facilities and all that sort of thing. I said, but um, I said, I, I don't have a huge team. I don't have a huge budget. I said, but I can promise you that I will work harder than anyone. I'll work for the next 365 days straight and I won't let you down. I'll give mm. you everything. I said, I'll give you everything I've got. I won't switch off because, you know, it's all I had. And yeah. um, everybody clapped and, you know, he was like, it's fantastic. It was something like that. Yeah. I just said, I'm just going to work my ass off and, and I'm not going to let you down. Yeah. And I thought, well, there's no point in trying to come in and sugarcoat something or look like I've got this huge, because I didn't have a clue how quite how I was going to do it at this stage. I'm yeah. just like, you know, I always have this thing, um, you know, when you, when you take on something big, 
with nothing. It's like eating an elephant. People say, well, how do you eat an elephant? You just take a fucking big bite and chew like mad and just keep going, you yeah. know? And so it was like that. I'm like, well, I figure, I didn't say that, but I was like, you know, I'm just going to work, work and work. And I did. I, I, I came home from there and I worked straight for a year, mm. you know, with, with, with very little um, resources or staff or, or whatever else. And it was, um, it was, I don't know, I never doubted it though. I just knew, had this vision. You know, the only time I doubted, I guess, is that the morning of the, the first day of the expo. <laughs> And we're thinking, shit, I wonder if anyone shows I wonder if anyone shows <laughs> yeah, up. No, it's all, yeah. Like, here I am, I'm full of confidence and I, <laughs> I believe this is gonna work and Arnold's here and fuck this is gonna be cool. And I remember I was in the organised office and I opened the doors because of you know at the Melbourne Exhibition Centre. And I'd had it for FedEx, so it wasn't all new ground, but mm. I remember I opened the door and looked out and there's this queue of people right down Mate. past the casino. I'm like, Wow. This is going to be all right. Yeah, you know? yeah. But um, look, every year it's it, it, it's a, it's a difficult space, and uh, you've got to work your ass off. There's no there's no resting on your laurels because you can't mm. because you know the economies of things change and the supplement industry changes and some things go up and some things go down and it gets harder and harder to get sponsorship mm. you know, with the economy and all the e trading and all this sort of thing. So I've learnt you know more about you know, business and people and psychology than ever ever could have imagined. But yes, yeah, so that's how I got mm. to meet Arnold. You know, and then I thought. Oh, you know, it'd be good to get to. Okay, so now he knows. He called me by my first name. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. At least, at least now, even if this doesn't work out, at least he knows who I am. Like, hundred percent. It's a long way from that kid who just wanted the picture. So then we got through that, and I'm like, oh, it'd be pretty cool. Just go eat with him and sort of be friends or smoke a cigar together. And um, you know, when he came out, in fact, it was the next show I went to after that was Brazil, and I got sucked into being like one of his security guys, like in the middle of the bubble, and we really clicked. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought, oh, I think he likes me. I think we're going to be good friends, you know, because I guess I was um, out of the five different continents, you know, some of the other partners, English wasn't their first language right. or they were a bit reserved or whatever. So I kind of had this click with him from, from day one. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can just tell when someone's into you and he's like, um, he, he, he started to kind of mentor me with, you know, business and life and, and everything else. And then we started traveling together kind of full on and, and, um, just became really tight, more than I ever yeah. could have imagined. And, uh, you know, we've been to his office and his house and, you know, eaten with him probably a hundred times and shared some great moments and uh, really pleased and proud to see he's become, you know, more than just a business partner, but a great friend and mm -hmm. mentor and, and someone who's helped me enormously to be way better at everything I do. Right. Because, you know, now I really know his story and where he's come from and how inspiring that is. I mean, it was always inspiring from the outside, but to see it from the inside and see how smart this guy is and how he can work a room and how he can talk to people, how he can inspire others and how he can take over a press conference. I've learned all those skills, yeah. you know, from being around him. Like we talked before about you want to follow people that are great so you can be more like them. Well, I've been, you know, on the road with, I think, the smartest and most recognisable person on the planet yeah. for five years. So if I can get better at my presentation and my shit, my speech and my cadence and everything else, well, then it's a wasted opportunity. Yes, you for know? sure. And... Uh, yeah, my dream was always to, uh, yeah, because I've been a professional MC for for years, but just sort of on a smaller scale, was to MC the Arnold in Columbus, and this year I got to do that. You know, yeah, after yeah. going there and watching that show for my whole life, you know, being a kid, um, I remember I walked out of there that first time and said, I want to MC this show one day, and I want to bring the Arnold Classic to Australia. So uh, when I got to MC it this year, they go, oh, tell them something about yourself to open the show, and I said, I told that story. I said. Yeah, I'm just a, a kid from a, a country town in Australia and I came here first in 1991 and I walked out of there knowing two things. One, that I was going to bring the Arnold Classic to, to Melbourne, Australia one day and in two weeks' time we're going to do our fifth edition. Everyone started to cheer and clap. And I said, and the second thing is that I was going to stand here in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, and MC this show one day. That's and it. here I am, you yeah. know. And the place went nuts. Like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, the emotion <laughs> kind of really lifted in the room and yeah. I knew I, I had them in the palm of the hand yeah you know? and then I took over and did it with my home style which they hadn't seen before so it was, it was great and, I, and then I got to do the next two um, obviously the one here and then got to do the one in, in Sao Paulo in Brazil oh, wow. four weeks later as well so I did three out of three to start the year and you know you start ticking a few things in a few boxes like that and having a few wins and I think you know your whole confidence and belief systems just goes fucking kaboom mm. you know and I'm like, okay, well then how can I encourage all of you guys to to do, you know, to find your passion and your drive and your vision and, and to chase it down? Because mm. look, life's so short and 
And I get this all the time, Tom, people say, what's your greatest motivation? You know, what do you do? And when I do my Relentless Momentum seminars, and when I do my questions online, it always comes up, but you, you sort of touched on it before, why are you this way? You know, what, yeah. what turns you into this monster? And it's one very simple emotion, is that I, I, I don't fear anything. I've never been afraid of you know, little weird things that most people are. I'm afraid of regret. I'm afraid that, and I, I always get dark with people and explain that no one gets out of here alive, mm. right? One day we're all going to die. And that's going to be a real day of reckoning where you're going to lie there and go, fuck, I wasted that life to please other people. Or, you yeah. know, I didn't take that's my chances because I was, I was too scared or too pathetic or whatever. Or you can look back at your life and go, fuck, what a ride. <laughs> yeah. And I want to be that guy. I've always, from when I was a kid, I, I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to be that one who went through that secure and safe life that they sold to me and go, oh, well, I paid off my house. Yeah. Fucking bingo. <laughs> That's, a win. That's my legacy. Yeah, but I never, yeah, in, in, in a city of four and a half million people, I got to own a house. Fuck the house. I don't care. Yeah. For living in a hotel. You know, but for me, it was about traveling. It was about knocking over my goals it's always been about doing the things that they said couldn't be done and I think that to me is the greatest motivation is mm. to, to be able to say you know what even if I fail I'm not going to have any regrets I'm not going to go oh, what if I had a, had the courage to try that idea that I had or what if I had the courage to do that fitness expo or what if I had had the courage to throw away the keys and, and I did have so mm. to me it's always about um, you know risking something that matters and having the courage to do the impossible